Question five. There's a school nurse records the height of each of the 150 students in class A who was vaccinated. The table shows the information. Complete the table below and use information to calculate an estimate of the mean height. So let's complete the table. We need the midpoint. So your average is 120 plus 140, then you divide it by two. That's I think that should be 130. Then we we'll multiply f times x. So we'll multiply these two now. Bring out the calculator. 67 times 130. 8,710. Now, after we do that now, we're supposed to find an estimate of the mean. Now, an estimate of the mean bar x is the sum of fx over the sum of f. So in that case now, you need the sum of fx, you need to add up all of this. So we'll add up all of these. So we're going to add them. 280 plus 1,800 plus 3,850 plus 8,710 plus 3,000 plus 680. We'll add them and we're getting 18,320. And then now we need to divide by the sum of f. The sum of f is add up all of these. So add up, I think it should be 150, but just for confirmation, 4 plus 20 plus 35 plus 67 plus 20 plus 4. Yep, it is the 150. So now we do our division. When we do our division, 1, 8, 3, 2, 0, divided by 150. We do our division and we get 122. So our x is equal to 122.1, because it's at the one decimal place. And I think the height is in centimeters. And one centimeter. So roughly four feet tall. So whoa, these are some short children. I guess it is primary school or high school. It says in a class the mean height of students is 123.5 and the standard deviation is 29.8. For class A, the standard deviation is 21.38. Using information comment on the distribution of the heights of the students in class A and in class B. So notice they give us the standard deviation. Now, we don't want to get too technical, but whenever you're given standard deviation, this tells us an average how much this tells us an average how much the student's height vary away from the mean that's what standard deviation gives so in other words in class b you realize there's a greater standard deviation and so it deviates more from the mean that's what we're saying all right now in class a the standard deviation 21.38 so it is deviating less all right so Let's make a general comment now. And so, the standard deviation of class B being 29.87 indicates that the Heights of students in class B are more spread out All right. 
find then that of class A also that means so just to add what the standard deviation means that means standard deviation so it is telling you if you add and subtract the standard deviation from the mean that tell you where majority of the students type will lie so let me write that now also that means put it here also that means majority of the students height in class a lies between at 21 to the mean being 122 so look 122 plus 21.38 you get 143.5 and then if you were to know subtract the 122.1 subtract the 21.38 you would get 100.72 so we can tell them that majority of, majority of the students height oh no let me see majority of the students height in class a lie between 100.7 centimeters to 145 what was it again when we add it 21 i have to add it again One forty three, I mean, point five. Then the last, last statement, or the last one. I know it's just one mark, but you just want to show them that you understand what standard deviation is. You can also then tell them majority of the students of class B height lies between so we we'll add 29.8 to this so 123.5 minus 29.87 we get 93.6 so it lies between 93.6 centimeters to Change it to plus 153.3 or 153.4 centimeters. That's it. That's it. Nice. Next part now. It says use your cumulative frequency curve to find an estimate of the median height. So no. Cumulative frequency, so add 24 to 35. I think that is 50. Is that 59? I think it's 59. All right, my pen disappeared. Fifty nine. Then add it. This plus 20 is 146. That's it. Now it says we need to plot the cumulative frequency curve. Notice they plot most of it for us. We just need to plot the upper class boundary. So we're going to plot 120 to our 59. So 120 to our 59. And they're using X. So 120 to 59. This would be 58. So 59 is here. Then now we need to plot our 160 to 146. So 160 to 146. 146 is 142, 144, 146. This is it. 1, 2, 3. Now we can go ahead and 
now we draw our cumulative frequency curve. Now I cannot draw smooth curves. So I usually do this. I connect them with straight lines because I can't draw the curve. I really can't. But by doing it this way, it also comes out like a smooth curve. And remember they said from a cumulative frequency curve, find the median. First thing you need is the position of Q2. You divide 150 by 2 to get 75. So 75 would be 72, 74, 75 is here. This is the position of the median. Can you draw your dotted lines? Draw our dotted line going across. And then we go down. Remember, it's an estimate. I have to zoom because I'm making some mistake. Definitely was making some mistakes. So let me go again. 75. Right here is 74. Oh, let me not use red. Change it to a different color. Yellow. This is 75. We go across here. It will go down. That's our median height. So this is position of Q2. This is Q2. So in that case, our median is 120. This would be 130. So it's increments of 2, 122, 124, 124 and a half. So that's our median. Just to go back and tell them now, we can go back and tell them the median is 124.5. The median, 124.5 centimeters. Now it says find the probability that a student chosen at random was greater than 130 centimeters. So first, we go to student height being 130 centimeters. 130 is right here. Let's change the color to black. Here's 130. We'll come up to here and we'll go across. That is what? 92. So it's 92 on the cumulative frequency graph. That's the, remember, this is my graph. Yours will give you a slightly different value. That's 92. I want students greater. So remember, there's a total of 150, right? So from 92 to 150, if you do the subtraction, 150 minus 92. That is giving you is that 68? Put in a calculator if you're not sure. 150 minus 92. That's 58, not 68. 58. So in that case, now we can tell them the probability is 58 over 150.